Visual effects are an important part of making any video game feel good. A seemingly simple animation can have its impact greatly improved through the use of a good visual effect. Include that alongside a reactive camera and some kick-ass sound effects and ooh baby that boring ass animation is now juicy as hell. Now I'm not exactly a visual effects artist so I've often strayed away from covering the topic on the channel in the past, but in my recent experiments exploring different stylized post-processing effects in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline, I've also found myself playing around with the visual effects graph tool and developing a number of different effects, one of which is this fun little comic book impact effect. It turned out to be pretty simple, so today I thought it might be fun to explore how we can create a neat little effect like this in Unity using visual effect graph and shader graph with no additional knowledge required. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. If you haven't seen it already, I actually extrapolated this effect using some of the techniques from my renderer feature video. It's a much heavier topic than this video, but worth watching if you're interested in some of the backstory to how I got here. Let's jump in and get started. As any good artist or creative will tell you, it's important to use reference. I really like this image here that I found on iStock Photo, so I'm going to use this as my key reference to work from. But as you can see, there are tons of variations available, so feel free to search the web yourself and grab your own reference. Using this as our starting point then, there are different elements that we're going to need to create to achieve this effect. The first and most noticeable part is obviously this big star bubble that creates the general shape of the impact. We also have various smaller stars scattered around the bubble. We have these impact lines here. And we also have our bubbly text element. And last but not least, we have these half-tone dots across the image. The first thing we need to do then is source each of these assets ourselves. Thankfully, there are plenty of stylized comic book texture packs available on the asset store. Usually this is the route that I would go with as it would give me a ton of variety over different styles of effects. However, I want to be able to distribute this package for my lovely Patreon subscribers, so I've spent some time in Photoshop producing my own assets. If you want a quick and easy solution, I'll link to a few of the asset store packages down below, or you could show your support for the channel and grab these assets as part of the demo over on Patreon. Speaking of which, if you want access to behind the scenes posts, exclusive updates to projects I'm working on, early access to new videos and downloadable packages from demos like this one, consider heading over to patreon.com slash gamedevguide and becoming a member for as little as a dollar a month. A huge shout out to everyone who is already a member over there, I really genuinely appreciate your continued support of the channel. So with our assets ready, we can start building out our visual effect. If you don't have it installed already, you'll want to head to the package manager and download the visual effect graph package. If you're using the built-in renderer, most of the techniques in this video can be repeated using the old particle system, but since I'm using the universal render pipeline, we're going to be using the visual effect graph today. With the VFX graph installed, we'll create a new VFX graph asset in our project, and then drag it into our scene. Then let's double click on the graph asset and open up the VFX graph. Okay, so we're going to start by replacing the default VFX and getting our main bubble here to render into our scene. We'll delete everything except from the spawn node. This node essentially handles the logic for firing off the particle events. So since we only want our particle to fire once rather than continuously, let's replace this with a single burst node instead and set the count to one. We'll then create a new initialized particle node. We only want to create a single bubble when the event is fired, so we'll set the capacity to one. We'll then add a set lifetime node and designate a lifetime of two seconds. Next, we'll add an output particle quad node. The output block controls how our particles are rendered to the screen. And as you can see here, it also allows us to customize how our particles are rendered on the quad through the use of a shader graph shader. Later in the video, we're actually going to run this through a custom shader for our two-tone dots effect, but we'll leave this here for now while we set things up. Now, let's choose our spike bubble texture as the texture to render on the quad. If we take a look at our scene, we might have to zoom in a little, but our texture is rendering in the center of our VFX object. Nice one. Right now, the quad is tiny, so let's make this a little larger to work with and match the size of this default cube here. In our initialized block, let's add a set size node and set this to one. Now, let's move on to our text asset. We can pretty much duplicate this whole setup here and just swap the texture out for our text. If we look in our scene though, because my text texture isn't square, it's stretching to the size of our quad. So we'll need to make some adjustments to the scale of the quad using a set scale node, adjusting the Y axis to somewhere around 0.3. In our example, our text is colored red. So let's add a set color node in our output here and choose something that we like the look of. All right, this is already starting to shape up. 
Let's now focus on adding our additional elements and then we can make some further improvements and get things moving. For our stars, we're actually going to want to make a new burst spawn node. Here, we'll set the count to around 10. We'll also make sure to increase the capacity in our initialize node. And then create a random size node and set these to a range between 0.05 and 0.1. I want the stars to explode out from the center. So let's add a set position sequential node and use the circle option. This allows our stars to spawn at a distance from the center and in a certain order. If we play with the count option, you can see how it affects the distribution of our stars. I don't want an even distribution, so what we'll do is create a random number node and set the range between 8 and 12, and feed this into our count port. Let's also do the same with our radius port, setting the range between 0.3 and 0.8. This should give us a more random, but mostly circular distribution of stars around our bubble here. Then, let's add a set velocity from direction and speed node here, and our stars will now have some movement to them. The main issue right now though, is that if we move our camera around, all of our particles are in a fixed direction in space. We could use an orient to camera node inside of our systems, but unfortunately, once we start dealing with velocity distributions like this, it doesn't take the camera position into account. So I found the best thing to do is simply point the entire visual effect asset towards the camera. That way, the simulation stays local and parameters are a lot easier to understand when editing, but everything is rotated in world space afterwards and still looks good no matter where your camera is currently positioned. This can be achieved pretty easily by applying this simple look at script to the visual effect asset itself. I've also added a line here to make sure that the object orients itself within the scene view as well. Now the entire simulation should look good no matter which direction we're looking at it from. All right, so the final step then is to get our action lines rendering. Let's duplicate this block of nodes and set our output texture as our line texture here. We want these lines to be quite small and stretched, so we'll need to use some low numbers in our set size node. I found around 0.02 and 0.05 work well. Then in the set scale node, we'll use a random range on the Y axis from three to five to get a nice stretched line from the center. In our output node, we can use the orient along velocity node to have our lines point towards the center. You may need to mess around with the pivot of the texture in the import settings or use a set pivot node in the initialize block, but eventually it should point towards the center. If you need to make any additional adjustments to the direction, you can also use a set angle node and mess with the angle rotation on the Z axis. We now have the basics of our impact effect. Our reference has two sets of lines though, so we can duplicate our line stack and flip the scale on the image to get the mirrored line effect. Then it's a case of playing around with some of the settings until we get something we like. I found that changing the pivot point slightly and reducing the count on both the position node and capacity nodes seems to yield pretty decent results here. The final step then is to create our halftone effect. To do this, we're going to need to create a custom shader that renders our dots on top of our textures. So let's create a new VFX shader graph in our project here. If we set the default color to red and then set this as our shader in our bubble VFX output here, you can see the whole quad turns red, which now means it's running through our shader. Let's start by creating the dots that we want to filter our texture through. I actually did this in my previous video using a Voronoi node, so I'm gonna use a slightly alternative technique today. We're gonna to start by creating a simple grid. Let's add a UV node, plug it into a multiply node, and then plug that into a fract node. If we then create a size property over here in our blackboard, hook this up to our multiply node, and then save the asset, we should now have a size value we can set in our VFX graph. If we play around with the scale, our quad should display a grid that changes size. Now let's turn this grid into dots. We'll subtract 0.5 from our current setup here and run this through a length node and then run that through a step node. If we adjust the edge here, you can see that as we reach the upper areas of our number, we get a transition threshold for the dots. So to make this a bit easier, let's run this input through a lerp node and set the lower limit to a value of around 0.65. Then we'll add an input property called threshold that we'll also make as a slider and hook that into our T port. In our graph, we should have a slider now that we can use to define the threshold of our dots. Finally, let's just one minus the results so that our dots are white instead of black. And we now have our mask. 
Let's add our texture back in here by creating a texture property in Blackboard and then adding a sample texture node. Now we just need to add our dots on top. So let's create another one of our good old LERP nodes and set our dots as the T value here. We'll set our texture as the input for the black value and then for the white value, we'll add a new color property. As you can see, we now have our dots overlaid onto our texture, which is great, but I'm not loving how the dots look over these black marks here. So let's actually head back into our shader and fix that. Instead of overlaying the dots color directly, let's multiply the color by our texture so that any areas in black don't get affected. Now we have the dots overlaid into the brighter parts of the image. Perfect. So this is looking pretty good. The final steps then are to add a little bit of motion. We already have some subtle movements from our stars and lines, but we can do a bit more to finish it off and give the effect some more life. We'll start by animating our bubble and text. Something simple like a scale should work pretty nicely for this effect. So let's make sure both of these pass through an update node. I'm not really sure why, but without this, animations don't work. Anyway, in our quad, we'll add a multiply scale over life node and hook in an animation curve. Then we'll set up a simple curve for our scale to follow. Now we have a bubble that animates in at the start and scales down at the end. Let's do the same thing for our text but we'll add a minor delay so it comes in a little later and tweak the curve value to peak just above one. The curve settings here are really what's going to give life to this effect, so you'll want to play around a bit to get the results you might be looking for. I wanted my text to have some impact and feel like the punchiest part, so having it push in a little more than the bubble behind it and maintain a sense of motion is super important. Let's then also add this effect to our stars. For our lines though, they look a little weird zooming back out, so we'll edit the curve to just have them scale in, and then instead we'll set their alpha over life and have them fade out at the end. Finally, let's add a little bit of rotation to our elements. We can use the set angle random on a few different elements, such as our bubble and text, to vary the look a little bit more. Our stars are also looking pretty uniform, so we'll add some randomness to their angles there too. Let's also add a bit of rotational movement over the life of our bubble. Nothing too crazy, but giving it a little bit of rotational movement should help. And there we go. With that, our effect now transitions nicely in and out of shot, and our work is complete. We now have a classic comic book impact effect that bursts onto the screen. Obviously, this is just a starting point. There are plenty of variations you can make. For instance, in this variation, I've run other elements through the dot shader. I've added additional types of elements like smoke effects and additional dots behind the main bubble. I've even animated each individual letter. Honestly, there's so much here that you can play with, so go crazy and experiment. But that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, do hit that like button and let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so you'll know when a new video goes live. Or if you'd like to see more from me first, consider checking out one of the videos on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.